Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shayna Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you today. Welcome back to your everyday watercolor journal ideas day. I don't even know what day this is. I will find out when I go back and figure out and upload the video. So somewhere in the 12s or 13s, I think. We just got done uh, painting in the last few days a bunch of animals. So we did chickens, which was a big request, sheep, and this whimsical pig piggy that we did so now we are going to move on um, not that animals aren't going to come back I have lots of recommendations on my list thank you thank you thank you to all of you who leave recommendations in the comments um, I love them it keeps my ideas fresh and when I just don't know what to paint I just pick one of your ideas and um, go from there and it's been great so I have lots more ideas on the list that you have given me and I'm keeping a running log so I don't forget any, but um, we will get to them all in the future. Today we are going to switch gears and we've done a lot of animals. We did a bunch of food, um, flowers. We're going to do something a little bit more uh, patterned and repetitive today. So I hope you enjoy it um, for those days where you just don't have a lot of creative energy or don't want to really pay attention to drawing or creating a you know a full kind of um, animal or landscape um, something like this could be really helpful and useful I'm going to actually use some tape today in my journal because I'm going to frame out a little section this can also help too when you don't want to use the whole page you can either split your pages in half um, or in quarters to make smaller areas. I'm just going to put this one right in the middle, but I just want a nice little frame around it, a square. Be careful with your watercolor journal papers if they're not 100% cotton or they're just not um, as high quality of some of your cotton papers with your tape. So just be careful when you take off your tape, you may want to heat it up with a hair dryer or a heat gun if you have one really quickly because it peels off much easier and you won't have to worry about ripping any of the paper in your journal. Um, okay, I'll just fold those back for now. And I have my guide clipped down here. Um, and we're gonna put some patterns in here. And I am gonna use my pencil just to sketch out a few kind of very brief outlines. Um, but then we're gonna do some, some pattern painting. I don't know how this is going to go, so I'm just going to basically create a whole bunch of these kind of little gumdrop shaped lumps. We'll make some of them a little bigger and some a little smaller in each of these little shapes. And then I'm going to offset the next row so they're not perfectly like in line with each other. And really, I just want to kind of turn my brain off in, in some ways and paint lots of different or unique or interesting colors. And then I'm going to go in with some bleed proof white and paint some patterns on top of these as well. So this is almost like, you know, it's a little abstract almost like bird uh, feathers, which could be very interesting. And just creating some spaces up here. You won't see the tops of them necessarily, but we'll go all the way to the top there. All right, so I didn't do as much variation as I thought I would. They're all kind of even, except for this one down here, but you know. We can adjust that here. Let's do this one in here. We'll do a little lower and this one in here. Maybe that just that amount of variation will help. So we'll do this one kind of lower than these. And it's fine. Again, we're really focusing on just a little mellow painting session here. 
All right, so I'm gonna just lighten up these lines with my kneaded eraser. This kind of painting can be helpful when, and just to have in your back pocket, just I'm gonna paint simple patterns. I'm gonna paint overlapping circles or whatever when you just don't have the energy to decide what to paint and you just wanna focus on one thing. So I'm gonna just focus on color choice and kind of playing with all the colors in my palette. So I like to use Cor, Q-O-R by Golden is the name of the paints, but whether you have Sennelier or Winsor Newton Cotman's or Daniel Smith or Artist Loft or whatever kind of paints you have, um, just go ahead and play with the colors. So this is my color palette. There are a lot of colors in here I use very regularly. There are other colors I barely use at all, like this Viridian Green here. Um, little opera pink hanging out over here, my Daniel Smith tube that I cut open. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of go through and play with these and play with color palettes and also creating um, a nice watercolory feel. I don't want any of these to be uh, just a flat wash. I kind of want them to have lighter and darker areas. So have a real good sense, like a watercolor feel to them. So I'm gonna be dropping in some extra color. You could practice with these like wet on wet. You could see what, what one looks like wet first. Let's wet this one over here. And drop in purple. Look at that paint move around. Core does move really well with wet on wet, sometimes too well for some folks. So some people like core paints because they move so freely and really loosely with wet on wet technique and has to do, uh, I think, um, from what I've read, uh, with their, their binding agent. It's like their own proprietary binder. Um, and some people hate it because it's just too wild and out of control for them. What's this color? Let's see, I have phthalo blue. Might want to skip around a little bit. I'm actually gonna change my brush. I don't love this brush as much. It has a great fine point on it, but I feel like it's got, it doesn't have as much snap to it. So in certain situations where I'm trying to be very controlled, it can get a little out of hand. So I'm going to get rid of this brush and pull in. What do I got sitting over here? But my snappier brushes don't have as nice of a tip on them, some of them. All right, time to get some new brushes, I think, in the near future. So I'm just going to be jumping around. And then at the end, or after this dries, I'm gonna pull out my bleed proof white and maybe my micron pen and add lots of, lots of uh, design or pattern on, on top of these. So let's see, I could do more magentas. What about this cerulean blue? or this orange, let's throw an orange in there.
then maybe I'll stick with these colors and just repeat them a bunch of times. this blue up here because that's what one two three four five five colors is good I could add yellow maybe or I could just stick with these Now, if you're following along, you can stick with me here, or you can just fast forward this part of the video, kind of skip to the part where I start adding texture. And this, you can see, it's hard when you have a, a shape or pattern like this, and they're overlapping, to make sure you stick to your line so I went a little bit outside of the zone here but maybe I'll put a dark purple one here so I can re-establish that line let's put some dark green up here Purple. I've lost my line completely there, but I'm just going to make one up. There we go. Something like this, you can practice like forcing backwashes. So adding water to the center after you've already painted it and watching it push all the color to the outside. So as we watch this one dry, the edges are gonna do some really weird things, little cauliflower things or make hard edges. And those are things a lot of watercolorists or especially new beginners are trying to avoid or figure out how not to do, um, which is great. That's great practice. But also when you know how to force a backwash, is it, yeah, those cauliflower edges, putting blue and orange next to each other is always fun. They are complementary colors. Um, let's see. Let's bring magenta back. And I haven't really paid attention to like what colors are where and if I'm going to have to duplicate colors next to each other. Ooh. Hopefully it all just works out. I'm going to put some extra water in the middle of that one. So let's see, I have all five of my colors around these. So if I make this one blue, someone is gonna be too close to or touch a color that they already are. Um, so if I make that one blue and I make this one I don't know, pink, it's going to touch this pink, this one pink, and this one green there, or magenta. Magenta. Hopefully this green is dry, because I'm going to go right up next to it. And what I say green for that one, I'm going to wait to paint that one because it's got to dry a little bit more. Let's go over here. Let's put a green one down here. 
So see, this is enough work for my brain to do right now is to just figure out what color is allowed to be next to what. And sometimes that's all you have the energy for. We are low energy painting today. Sometimes we have high energy, sometimes we have low energy, but we're still painting. Okie dokie, where are we? So green, 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 green. So this has got to be blue. Now I'm wishing I introduced like one or two more colors. That purple is still wet, but I think the edge is dry. And that green is still wet. Ah. How many of y'all folk or struggle with waiting for things to dry before you move to the next step? You just want to keep going. Me, I'll raise my hand. Me. It is something that over time you do get better at. You get better at really understanding when you have to have to do that, when maybe you could get away with it a little bit. Okie doke. Let's see. What did we say? We said dark purple for this one and green for that one. All right. So let's do this is all pretty dry around here, but I got to kind of reclaim this shape a little bit. There we go. And, oh, I forgot orange. Orange is part of this mix. My goodness, everyone, why didn't you tell me? I'm just kidding. That wasn't your responsibility. Ah, that is the sixth color. That could really help here. So we're going to have to put it here. Kind of make sure I get it in all the quadrants. It will definitely be this color in here when those things dry. But also, like, uh, right, it's going to have to be here. Now I feel like there's going to be too much orange in the center here. Going to have to forgive myself for not paying attention. I mean, I could probably paint orange over one of these magentas. Uh, let's see what happens. And it's going to change the tone a little bit, but I think overall as a Yeah, that works. All right. So at least I have it kind of on all levels and it'll go here too. Uh, so magenta is definitely going to have to go over here. I wonder if you guys are watching and like yelling at your screen like, "No, paint it over here. Paint it over here." watching me make these decisions in real time and being just totally disgusted with me like oh my gosh I can't believe she picked that spot these are the things I imagine when I'm painting and y'all are watching um, later on because this is not live or real time I'm just talking to a camera but I imagine you all being here with me And often you do not disappoint, I will say, in your comments. You have such great comments and questions. So we'll put orange in here. And now I'm almost feeling like I have too much orange, but you know, c'est la vie. That blue is still wet, so I'm going to be really careful. And then I'm going to clean some of this up in with my textured pen, maybe, or my white. All right, we're almost there. We just have a few more spots to fill in. I think we're gonna do, 
purple here. Was that the right choice? And sometimes you get like halfway through and things are looking pretty ragged around the edges or you're just not sure if it's going in the direction you want it to go. Stick with it. Stick with it. Promise me you'll stick with it. All right, green. Green always looks nice next to magenta. Because again, they're complementary colors. You don't want to mix them unless you want brown, but you put them next to each other and they become their best selves. All right, up in this corner, we might do an orange, that tiny little bit there. And then, oh gosh, such pressure. Um, magenta up here too, because I turned this one orange. So magenta, 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 magenta. think that's the right decision and then what do you all think about those other two side corners what should we end on let's take a little inventory so our top row doesn't have any purple in it right now like this top row across here so one of them should be purple and I think it should be I don't know which one I think it should be let's see because we're pretty balanced with purple I'm gonna put it on this side. Well, that orange is still very wet. I'll do my best to help it dry by spreading out the paint a little bit. Now it should be able to dry a little bit more quickly. I'll give it a, like a lighter section. I'll pull some paint off. Oh, that was a really dark purple, but I know I'm pretty sure it will lighten up enough. A little bit of paint off there we go and then so the other side I guess this could be orange or blue I'll put blue up there even though it's green blue green or blue green blue that's okay it's only this little tiny corner all right so that is our pattern and we're gonna let that dry I'm gonna peel off the tape I think ahead of time just because I want to see those clean edges and then I'm gonna get my bleed proof white and my micron pen to add some um, texture over top of these all right we're back and this is dry and I did heat these up a little bit they have dried a little but this is gonna make us feel it's going to make me feel so much better. The minute I take off this tape and I see those clean lines, you get rid of all this like crud on the edges. It's like, ooh, that looks a thousand times better already. And then we're going to add our additional patterns on top. And this is just serving as kind of our base. There we go. Look at that cute little window into this funky little gumdrop world. All right, throw this tape away because I ruined it. Let me get that bleed proof white. So I have my bleed proof white here. If you have a gel pen, a white gel pen, I, think I have one here, but I don't think it's, I feel like my gel pen's never, okay, you know what? I'm gonna use a gel pen. If you have a gel pen or a Posca pen, um, I have a micron pen here. We'll see how far we get with the gel pen. I'm just gonna start to make like 
patterns on top. So I'm going to do these little hashy marks that kind of go with the shape of my little gumdrop. Almost looks like a little cactus. And like as I'm doing this, I'll probably alternate white and black, probably trying to put the black on some of the lighter colored ones and the white on the darker colored, the more saturated ones. So let's do something here that like comes up from the center. And just pattern making can so relaxing. There we go. Let's do. And you don't have to switch back and forth like this. The bleed proof white would be a little bit starker white than this gel pen is. So as this is drying, it is getting not as contrasty. Wonder what would happen if I do a second layer. Let's see. Mm, no, it doesn't really work. But let me show you what bleed proof white would look like. Take my brush. Depending on the size of your brush, you'll have more control. So look at how bright white that is compared to the gel pen. To this particular one that I have. Now you might have better gel pens. I don't really use them that often. I don't I don't even know where I got this from. Uh, I might have it might have been given to me. It's in my jar. There we go. So yeah, I think I'm going to use the bleed proof white just because it's much brighter and more contrasty. Harder to work with for sure. Um, you have less control. Or need to have better brush control for doing tiny little designs or a smaller brush can be helpful. I do have to add some more black ones in, but I definitely want to do this. Maybe I'll do these in polka dots. And let's see. Mm -mm. All right, and then you can keep continuing through. Maybe I'll speed this part of the video up a little bit because otherwise we're going to be way over time, but you can see all the different patterns I'm going to put in. All right, there we have it, our beautiful patterned uh, little daily journal exercise. We got to use a bunch of our colors. We got to get our brush on the paper. We got to use some other fun little experimental things to add to our watercolor, our 
bleedproof white and our micron pen and this was um, such a fun exercise i love doing these and just breaking things up every once in a while um, and what a bright little splash of color added to our journal so thank you so much for following along with this one let me know what you thought do you want more like this interjected kind of throughout our watercolor journal journey where we're doing more pattern things as well as objects like animals and foods and landscapes and things like that all right thanks so much happy painting y'all don't forget to check out the description of this video like and follow or subscribe to this channel like this video share with a friend who you think might enjoy this as well um, thanks so much and happy painting